about what we're doing here. Joe is trying to make visible these two men. One, thank goodness, still walking the earth, and the other one is not, but he still is. These these two men really, uh, what would you say, Joe? Of the foundation of <laughs> like everything we do? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's like this today, but it seemed like back then, it seemed like these guys were in a different stratosphere. If they were the major leagues, it seemed like we were like double A, and we'd, we'd go to our little gigs and, and play uh, their repertoire and try to play like them. And then we got to triple A, and you were one of the first guys to, uh, with Harold, it seemed like you kind of bridged that gap there. He used to speak about John Coltrane. He would say he was a better human being than he was a musician, and we know what a great musician he was. I'll say the same thing about Harold Mayburn. He was a true uh, nurturer, first and foremost. Not even a humanitarian, like a nurturer. He, he'll take anyone that has an authentic interest in what he has to give, and he will give you more than you could ever take. And it will last, it will last the rest of my life with him even off the planet. Every day I remember something that he gave me. I think he, from the bottom of his soul, he wanted both of us and some of his other students to do well. And he knew, 100% sure, we're gonna do well if he was there. Thank you for helping us recognize the genius of John Coltrane. And when I say genius, John William Coltrane, we knew he was a super duper musician. But what you did know and don't know, he was an even greater human being. And I had the pleasure of knowing him and working opposite him and speaking with him. And his whole character was about humility. He was never satisfied. Why do you think he likes the Coltrane Festival so much? How, I mean, uh, he would just, <laughs> I don't know. he would get so excited for it, right? And it's like, and you guys would play like three weeks at a time. We've been here three weeks, 63 sets of music, no nights off. I think that's remarkable. And he's, other musicians deserve a big hand, you know, for their endurance. Thank you. He was so determined. It's like Olympics. He was so determined to right. power up every night. And even like each night, <laughs> he would be more powerful. for it so hard you can't believe a person that's 80 years old would go two nights without sleeping talking a mile a minute beautiful wisdom and playing like a, like a, a, a an enduro athlete with a brain <laughs> about being down at Birdland. He was playing with all the singers that month, Dakota Staten, Carmen McRae, Johnny Hartman. This <clears throat> opposite band was John Coltrane Quartet, and they would sit on, he, Harold would sit on the Bud Light cases or Bud <laughs> cases and listen to Train practice. But that's why Train did Coltrane Hartman, precisely because they were alternating sets and Coltrane wanted to do an album with the vocalist and he was listening to Harold with Johnny Hartman. That's true. Mr. Eric Alexander, Mr. Joe Farnsworth, Mr. John Webber, Mr. Steve Davis, Mr. Vincent Herring, yours truly, thank you. After 
63 sets of music, we have the right to pause for whatever the call. Don't you think so? I don't know too many people can do that at any age. 21 straight days. No time to watch football, basketball, the WWE, soap operas, anything. Because when you finish three sets a night, you go to bed and you stay down. You only get up when it's time for the gig. Seriously. Once again, we sincerely thank you for coming out for these last three weeks. Yeah. 